charge of our, our lives. We'll try not to hold you too long, but we greet you first of all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life and hoping that he is the head of your life. For a few minutes, we want to talk to you from the book of Luke, the 15th chapter, a very familiar story, Luke chapter 15, verses 17 through 19. And it reads, and when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. For a few minutes, we want to talk to you from the subject, I refuse to remain in this condition. I refuse to remain in this condition. Oh, here's about Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come with thanksgiving. We thank you, Father, for this day's journey. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to stand one more time. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but right now we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We pray now in the mighty name of Jesus that you would hide all that men and women not see him, but see you instead. Allow me to decrease while you increase. Let your Holy Spirit move in this place. Touching somebody saying, I yield and yield yet to be saved. The blessing we ask. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do only pray. And they all said amen, amen, and amen. I refuse to remain in this condition. My brothers and sisters, the words that I have read in your hearing are words from someone who has fallen. They are words from someone who has come to be in a situation and not just in a situation, but in a desperate condition. He is in a low condition, a condition that he never dreamed of being in. If you have read the story, you'll remember that he left home in regal clothes, but he's now filthy and raggedy, and he's in the middle of a hog pen. He's in a lowly condition, but thanks be to God, there is good news to report. He came to himself and arrived at the conclusion that he made some serious mistakes. He let his father down and he had fallen into a situation that was worse than he had ever known. He realized that it was bad, but thanks to God that he don't have to remain in that condition. He knows that it's bad, but he also knew that he can rise from the situation and go back to where he belonged. In other words, he refused to remain in this condition any longer. And I believe I can speak for some of us who are not ashamed to admit that we've been there. We may not have found ourselves in the condition that this young son was in, but we've all been there. If we are truthful with ourselves, there have been times when we didn't know where our next meal was coming from. There have been times when we were down to our last dime just when the bills were due. There were times when our body seemed to refuse to give up the sickness that it had, over, it had overtaken us. Then one day we came to realize that there is better for us than we are currently experiencing. I don't know about you, but there is more for me than what I currently endure. I refuse to live belief my privilege. I refuse to be less than what God made me to be. I refuse to allow anything or anybody to make me feel small. And the good thing is that I don't have to. I don't have to be forever penalized uh, 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 by my past mistake. I, uh, I don't have to forever be in the condition that I am in. This story of the prodigal son is a story of his transgression. It's a story of his straying and his departure 
from the training and the upbringing of the father. I rejoice not only that there is a report of how he went wrong, but there is also a report how he came back to his father's house. And we must understand that no matter how low we have fallen or how far from the father we have strayed, it is possible to come home. It is possible to return to the father. The story of the prodigal son sends us many good messages. One among the message is, don't hold my past mistakes against me. Uh, don't judge me by the past mistake that I have made. You need to understand that no matter how badly we may have erred in the past, it is possible to rise above those mistakes and return to the warm and loving embrace of the Father and enjoy the fellowship again with the Father. And some folks that you know still tend to hold their past against them, have moved beyond their past and have moved into a bright and far better future. I thank God for the story of the prodigal son. The record informs us that Jesus is the speaker. Jesus had told us a series of stories all in an effort to address the memory of the Pharisees. The Pharisees had been highly critical of Jesus because he went he spent time with sinners because he spent time with those who were lost. I am happy this morning over the fact that Jesus cares for us sinners. I rejoice in the fact that Jesus loves and cares for the lost. I praise him for the fact because I came from that crowd called sinners. Now don't get too comfortable because you came from that crowd known as sinners also. And it were not for the grace of God, it, it were not for the mercy of God, we were still running with that crowd right now. Can I get a witness? We know what God is able to do. He delivered us all from our uh, sinful condition. Though it had been a number of years since I met Jesus, since I came to the Lord's side. I have not become so holy and so sanctified that I can't remember when I was lost. I have compassion for those who are on drugs and alcoholics. I have compassion for the unsaved because I remember when I was lost. Now don't you ever forget from which you come. You ought not ever forget where God brought you from and where God delivered you from. Even though we may not have been guilty of some of the cardinal mistakes and some of the cardinal sin that others are guilty of. We, can, we too came from the group called sinners. We, you got to understand that the word of God teaches that all have sinned and come short. You don't remember when you used to come short. You ought to still remember some of the days when you were saying things that you know you shouldn't have said. You ought to remember when you were in places you know you shouldn't have been in. You ought to remember when you were engaged in stuff and in lifestyle uh, that were far from pleasing to the Lord. Maybe you weren't a crackhead. Maybe you weren't a, a drug addict or an alcoholic. But maybe you can remember when you had an attitude that was not pleasing to God. Scripture tells us Jesus was conveyed in this parable that God loves not only those who are saved, but those who are lost. And I must testify this morning that it was his loving kindness and his tender mercy, his unmerited favor, I can stand before any crowd anywhere and testify truthfully that I have a relationship with Christ. You see, Jesus set the example for us to follow. He was the Christ, the son of the living God, yet he took up time with sinners. I think he sets an example for us that we might not be so holier than thou that you can't take up saying, you can't take up some time with folk who don't know Christ. I don't know about you, but I can go anywhere and stay hold fast to the relationship with the Lord. Jesus was a friend of sinners. He was not running a running buddy with sinners, but he was a friend of sinners. Now, there are some folk I, that, that I'm a friend to, but I don't run with them. 
There, there are folk whom I am a friend, but I don't engage in their practice, nor do I partake in their lifestyle. For when the loss becomes serious about salvation, they don't look for folk who did all the things that they did. When folks got serious about salvation, they seek out somebody who has walked upright, somebody who has lived according to God's word. Jesus, by way of these parables, wanted the murmuring Pharisees to know that God loves the lost. In an effort to convey this message, Jesus teaches by using three parables. In each of the parables, either something or someone was lost. But in each of these parables, the parable ends by telling us that which started out as lost ended up being found. Uh, my prayer, but the, the story would not end until that which was lost was found. My prayer is that somebody, uh, someone's story this morning, those who are under the sound of my voice, that your story will not end until you found, until you can truthfully say it is well with my soul. Scripture tells us that Jesus had used two parables prior to the parable in our text. The first revolved a sheep that was lost. The second revolved a coin that was lost. The third revolves around a soul that was lost. Now notice that the sheep was lost, and it was lost on the outside. And I must tell you that a whole lot of folks fall into that category. Lost on the outside. But bear in mind, Jesus tells another story that which was lost on the inside. It was a loss on the inside, but the basic thing to it is both of them were still lost. A whole lot of folks will be lost on the outside. But let no one fool you. There's a big be a great many of folks who are lost on the inside. Can I get a witness? There are folks who, that they are lost on the inside, even though their names are numbered on the church roles. Lost, even though they hold positions and titles in church. Lost, even though they are frequent in their attendance of church service. Now the coin was on the inside, and I think I ought to tell you that it's good to be on the inside. That puts you close to where you need to be. But it's possible to be in the right environment and still be lost. Some folks show up at church every Sunday and are still lost as those that are on the outside. And I must also tell you that there's no degree of salvation. There's no level of being saved. That's why I don't tell folks I, show, I am sure enough saved. No, no, no. You see, either you're saved or you're lost, but you ain't showing up saved. And I think I ought to tell you that if you're lost, it's a bad position to be in. I say it frequently that I don't want to go to hell through the church. I don't want to go there wearing the title of Christian. If I'm going, let me be out there in the streets and boogie like I used to. You need to understand that I don't want to come to church and pretend there was a lost coin on the inside. But thanks be to God that that which was lost on the outside and that which was lost on the inside were found. The third parable was in reality the greatest of all. For it talked not about a lost sheep lost property, not about a lost coin, lost finance, but rather about a lost boy, a lost soul. And I believe that souls ought to be important to somebody. Interestingly enough, there was an effort put forth, there was an effort put forth to locate the lost sheep. There was an effort put forth to locate the lost coin, but nothing is said of any effort being put forth to locate the lost soul. Jesus evidently knew that lost souls must come to themselves. And whenever a lost soul comes to him or his or herself, they will bring themselves home. Somebody understand what I'm saying. Scattered about somewhere under the sound of my voice is somebody 
who came one day to yourself and you decided to come home. You decided to come regardless of what folks would say, how people would look at you regardless of what folk might do. You decided to come home. Time will not allow me the privilege to share it all, but permit me to say something very important. The text revives around a lost boy, a lost soul. The scripture tells us that he, he came to his father saying, Father, forgive me. Forgive me the portion of goods that I fall, that fall to me. There's no record that the father argued with him by simply, but he simply gave the boy what he requested. Evidently, the father knew, as some of us have come to know, that there are some things you have to let folks find out for themselves. Sometimes we can't talk. We can talk until we're blue in the face, and some folk become more determined to go in the wrong direction just the same. But when you leave them alone after you share as best as you can what's right, once you leave them alone, leave them in the hands of God. There's some situations out there that will help them to come to the awareness that they need to go home. Scripture tells us the boy had become fascinated with the far country. The boy had been thinking about things that he wanted and desired to do. Let me put it this way. He wanted to taste the, the life on the wild side. He had not been in that kind of lifestyle. His father would not permit those things. The boy wanted to taste life in the fast lane. Now some of us here can honestly testify that we've experienced a season or two in the life where we had a craving for life on the wild side. We felt that we were missing out on something because we could not do what others did. We desire to leave as, same, as, as some others live. But this boy had a desire for life on the wild side. And the record tells us that he elected to leave home and go in the far country. I, I, I give the boy credit. He realized that there were some things that he would not be able to do at home. He, Realized that there was some things that he was not going to be able to do while in his father's house. And I commend him for that. You see, I feel that all good parents ought to have some standards. Let me say that again. I feel that all parents ought to have some standards. I know that as a parent, you might consider by others as old-fashioned, old fogey, old and outdated. I know that the standard that we have may fall under harsh criticism, but all good parents ought to have some standards. And there ought to be a time when you can say to your children, if you're going to pull up a chair at this table, if you're going to live under this roof, if you're going to wear clothes that I bought for you, you're going to have to realize that there are some things you can't live here and do. You can't do it here. I don't care what they're doing down the street at Susan House. You live here. And as long as you're at this address, you have to abide by the principles and the standards of this house. Amen. The son realized that there was something that were not accommodated at his father's house. So he chose to put distance between him and his father. And there's a danger in having this between us and God. The Father in this parable symbolized heavenly Father and our desire must not be to put this between us and the Father. Our desire ought to be drawn nearer and closer to God. This boy said to the Father, give me the portion of good that failed fall to me. I know by virtue of who I am and that I have an inheritance come give me my share. The father gave the son the portion, and not many days after the scripture tell us the boy took his journey into the far country. Permit me to say here that by location he was in the far country, but somebody under the sound of my voice, spiritually speaking, you're in a far country. Scripture tells us that in this far country, the boy engaged in riots of living and lifestyle that were not pleasing to his father. He did things in that far country that he would never have done at home. He engaged in lifestyle contrary 
to the training of his father in that far country. He did some things that he should not have done in that far country. He went to some places that he shouldn't have gone. In that far country, he engaged in some stuff that he should not have been a part of. And permit me to say this. I know that we live in the age of liberal Christianity. And we have liberal Christians. And you need to understand that liberal Christianity suggests that you can do some or anything. But I want to tell you that the word of God said, come ye out from among them and be ye separated. As a follower of Christ, there's some stuff you just can't do. There's some stuff that you ain't got no business doing when you are a child of God. The boy lived a ragged life. I wish I had time to go through the whole story. But the record tells us that the day came when a mighty famine arose in that land. The record tells us that the boy ran out of money and found himself in want in time of a famine. You need to see this. For he wasted and then he won it. Let me say that again. First he wasted, and then he won it. I assure you this morning that whatever you waste today, there's going to come a time when you won it. The boy went to his so-called friend, who was always hanging around when he had plenty, but his wealth was gone. Then turn their backs on him, and I said it often that you'll find out who's who uh, in your time of need. You'll find out who's who uh, in your time of distress. In your time of trouble, you'll discover who your true friends really are. Amen. And some friends are with who are with you in the sunshine will disappear in the storm. Scripture tells us that no man gave unto him, so he found himself in the pig pen. It was so desperate that he got close to the trough and desired to eat what the hogs eat. God knows I wish somebody right here in Wetonka, over in Ellis City, somebody in Montgomery, somebody under the sign of God would just come to themselves. I wish they would come to realize that God's people, which are called by his name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek his face. And turn from their wicked way. Then will he heal from heaven. And he will forgive their sin. And will heal their land. Record tells us that while in this state. Having come to himself. He became aware. He looked at the condition that he was in. And, 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 and he realized that nobody was to blame. For being in a condition. In that shape but himself. He took ownership. He took ownership of his own shortcoming. He was in this mess because he owned uh, bad choices. And you know, I can hear him saying, I will not pass the book. I will not try to blame someone for my condition. It was there in that hall pen that he concluded that he had been in this condition long enough. And that he was the son of a rich man. No doubt. He said that my father is rich in houses and land. My father is rich, and he's able to supply my need. And in my father's house, even the servants have bread to spare. And here I am, starving in the hog pen. Look at my robe, it's raggedy. And it smells like the swine. But I'm concluded that I don't have to stay where I am. And the record tells us that the boy decided, I'm getting out of here. I'm getting out of this hog pen situation. And I'm going home. And you know, I got happy at that point thinking about that no matter how low you may have fallen, 
no matter uh, what your situation or condition may be, with the help of the Lord, uh, you can step out. Well, uh, the record is, uh, this young man said, uh, I'm getting out. I put myself in, so I'm going to get myself out. And uh, I want you to know this morning uh, that you won't even get out of the hog pen uh, until you refuse to stay there any longer. You got to get tired uh, of hog pen living. You got to get tired of uh, a hoping lifestyle and you gotta want to, to get out you gotta want to be free and I believe that somebody can testify that, that he who the, the son set free is free indeed well I wish you could have been there to see him saying that I don't know to have anything to take back home but myself. I'm getting out of this situation and I'm going home. I'm going back to my father and I'm going to tell my father, Father, yeah, I done wrong. Father, I sinned against thee and before thee. And I'm not worthy to be called your son. I'm not asking you to own me as your son. But I'm just asking you to make me one of the high servants. And if by chance you're listening to me, this morning, you ought to want to, to get out of the hall pen. Bad enough, God will give you strength. The God we serve will give you power to get yourself out of the hall pen. And I wonder this morning, is there anybody who's been in a bad situation and you wanted to get out? Anybody been in a bad circumstance and you wanted to step out? Is there anybody who can testify that God gave you strength? God gave you power to step right on out? Is there anybody in this under me who under my voice who can testify that he brought you out? Oh, I'm leaving you right here. But if you're one who's been emancipated by Jesus Christ, if you're the one who's been liberated by the Savior, if you're the one who will stand by the and you know for yourself that the Lord delivered you, you ought to be able to testify that it was the Lord that brought you out. It was the Lord that brought you this far. I don't know how you feel about it, but I refuse to stay in this condition. Every day I'm getting ready to move to a different place. I don't know how you feel about it, but I thank God I have a God on my side. Is it all right? Is it all right? If I testify for just one minute, I need to tell the Lord thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for waking me up early this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for starting me on my way. Thank you, Jesus, for opening doors that were cold in my face. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing me one more time to stand behind this poor pit and preach your word. I hadn't always been good, but every time I turn around, 
God, you're so good. Every time I turn around, you keep right on blessing me over and over again. That is why I got a made of mind that I'm not going to stay in this condition. What I'm going to do is reach up and grab my Jesus by the hand. I can see him grabbing God by the hand and putting me up out of the mark and the miry clay. Anybody here under the sound of my voice know that God is able. Is there anybody who knows that God will make a way for him? Is there anybody here this morning that know that God will pick you up and turn you around? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Well, I got to leave him, but let me finish my story. That young man uh, saw her walking uh, down the dusty road. Uh, I wish uh, you could have been there uh, to see him uh, in the raggedy uh, and smelly clothes. Uh, but look at the father. Uh, look at the father. Uh, as he looked down the road, uh, he recognized uh, his own son. Uh, he came running uh, and put his arms uh, around his son and every time the, the boy start talking the, the father said first boy the servant come here but father the, I sinned first boy the, first boy the servant go get a robe the, to put on my son servant go get some shoes to put on his But my son once was lost, but now he's found. And I wonder this morning, is there anybody glad this morning that Jesus found you? Are you glad that the Lord found you? I don't know how you feel about it. I'm so glad that he found me. just want to have a party. 
you ought to have a Holy Ghost party. Thanking Him for bringing you through. God fixing it. This COVID condition that we won't have to be in it for a long time. He's slowly moving. But we have to acknowledge the fact it's by His hand that we're going to be free of it. I don't care what happens or what goes on. Stay with the Lord. And if you stay with Him, you don't have to remain in your condition. God bless your heart. May He keep you is our prayer. All hips about. Master, here we are again. Just a few of your humble servants. Wherever they are gathered around. Watching and listening to this recording. Master, I ask that you touch everyone under the sound of my voice. Strengthen them where they're weak and build them up where they're torn down. Master, I pray that you will comfort grieving families, heal the sick throughout land and country. Master, I pray that you continue to bless love and peace and bless the members one by one. Master, touch the hearts of those members that have strayed away. We ask, Master, that you will bless those and strengthen those and heal those who have been tested positive with this COVID and comfort those families that have lost loved ones through this COVID. Master, not only them, but everybody that stands in the need. Master, I'm still asking that you will strengthen Sister Foster and her family as they go through their time of bereavement. Let them know, Master, that you're still God and God in charge. Master, when we come to our circumstances, come to our situation, Give us a mind to remember that we don't have to remain, stay in our condition. Be blessed, we ask. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do only pray. And they all say amen, amen, and amen.